So our next talk is by, by Megan Deeney. Uh, it's about plastics in the food system, human health, economic and environmental impacts. Uh, Megan is from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in the UK. Very interesting topic. So good morning, um, my name is Megan. I'll be presenting the preliminary results of a systematic scoping review about the impacts of plastics used in the food system on human health, individual and household level food security and economic factors, and the natural environment. So we have produced 8.3 billion metric tons of plastics to date, and mass production only began less than 70 years ago. Clearly, there are many benefits of using plastics, including supporting food safety and hygiene, for example, However, fears about the potential negative impacts are on the rise, especially concerning microplastics and chemicals leaching into food and drink. These fears are particularly prevalent in the media and also increasingly in public consciousness. But what is the research community's approach to these issues? So given the, the breadth of the food system and the range of potential impacts that plastics can have, there's a need to bring together um, literature from different fields of study in order to really understand what research is being conducted and what outcomes are being considered. A scoping review can help us do just this. So a scoping review is designed to map existing literature within a given area of interest. And it's particularly useful when that area is very heterogeneous, as for example with our plastics impacts. Um, what scoping reviews cannot do is to weigh up the evidence and to conclude whether plastics are in fact beneficial or harmful, for example, in a given usage. But what they can do really well, especially given a systematic approach such as ours, is to comprehensively describe the evidence in order to inform future research. So in line with the PRISMA extension for scoping reviews, um, we will examine the extent, range, and nature of the evidence on the impacts of plastics used in the food system. Um, and we aim to identify any evidence gaps or areas where future uh, systematic reviews could be conducted. So we characterize the food system based on, uh, or adapted from the FAO definition, and also the Food Environment Working Group of ANH Academy. So as you can see here, we have um, five very broad subsectors of the food system, beginning with agricultural production, which in itself is very broad and also includes um, aquaculture and fisheries and also foraging, for example, and ending at the waste disposal level of the food system. So we know already that plastics are used throughout um, the food system, as you can see here, um, but we also expect to uncover different uses as we move through the scoping process. Plastics are also um, a very difficult material to define, in fact, as there's many different chemical variations. So for the purpose of our review, we've taken the Plastics Industry Association Resin Identification Codes. Some of these you may be familiar with. Um, if not, you've almost certainly come into contact with most of them, if not all of them. Um, for example, polyethylene terephthalate is often used in soft drinks bottles, um, polyvinyl chloride in food packaging trays and wraps, and under the other category, we have some less common uh, plastics, but including polycarbonate, which is used in infant feeding bottles. So one of the first challenges for our review was to visually represent some of these exposure outcome relationships that we were hoping to explore in the literature. So having just discussed um, the exposure, uh, you can see that represented here on the left-hand side of the logic model. So it could be any plastic used at any part of the food system. Um, and this was really tied into our eligibility criteria because we wanted to draw some direct accountability to the food system. So for example, um, plastics used in cosmetics or medical applications uh, would be excluded. However, at the outcome level, we did not predetermine um, indicators that we would be looking at. Instead, we, we um, specified some broad impact domains that we were interested in. So you can see them listed here. Um, though clearly, these pathways very much interact with each other. Underneath each of these impact domains, we've listed um, some suggestions of potential indicator categories uh, that we might find in the literature, and also some intermediate outcomes that would all be considered in our review. So a brief note on uh, our methods. So a search strategy of around 200 search terms was applied to nine databases and 15 gray literature sources. We've discussed some of the eligibility criteria, but just to recap, that it had to be tied to the food system, the use of plastic, and at the outcome level, it could fall within any of those three domains. In terms of the population, it could be any population, whether it be soil, microbes, humans, for example, um, as long as the, the study demonstrated some onwards effects, so not just effect on the plastic itself. 
It could be in any country from 2000 onwards. Um, and in terms of study designs, we would include any study um, as long as it provided quantitative data and that it had a comparator either in exposure to plastic over time or differences in quantity. We would also include modeling and life cycle assessments um, and cross-sectional or case studies with a cause of death or a diagnosis of injury or illness outcome. So database searching returned over 92,000 results. Um, and it, as you can imagine, we were quite relieved to find half of those were duplicates. Um, and here we're presenting the first 500 randomly selected results to be included in our review. And we expect that this is around 15 to 20% of our final results. So just to explore um, these preliminary results with you, um, beginning with an exposure point of view in the food system. So within our subsample, the vast majority of exposures uh, researched by the literature were found at the agricultural production level. 30% um, of the research explored plastics used at the processing, transport, and storage stage. Only 7% um, looked at it through a lens of uh, marketing and retail. Just 3% at the household consumption level, and only one study considered the effects of plastics used at the waste disposal level. Just to zoom in for a moment on that agricultural production um, category within our literature, the specific uses of plastic at this point were by far and away uh, the most frequent was plastic mulch, as you can see here on the top left, laid on top of the land. The second was tunnels and greenhouses, and only 5% of literature looked at um, plastics used in fishing and animal rearing equipment. Remaining very much focused on the agricultural production um, literature that we found, um, let's explore some of the outcomes linked to, to that um, source of plastic use. So again, by far and away, um, the biggest outcome that we found, or the most frequent, um, was under the individual and household food security and economic factors. Though interestingly, none explored this um, using a human population, but explored it uh, sort of at the intermediate outcome level, particularly with yield, plant growth, and health. And this category accounted for around 85% of, of the outcomes that we found um, at the agricultural production level of plastic use. So much fewer outcomes came under the human health category, um, but by far and away, nutrient content was the most frequent, and only one study looked at um, phthalates as a consequence of plastic mulch. Under the environment, even fewer outcomes actually were found, but importantly, there were um, studies looking at pollution, um, in particular soil pollution with plastic residues and runoff of fertilizer into water sources. Water and energy use were also factors that were looked at, and biodiversity along with plastic consumption by wildlife. So these graphs just explore um, some of those relationships, now going back out to explore some of the other sectors of the food system. Mapped together here is human health and environmental outcomes. So within studies that were looking at that outcome, the most frequent exposure that they looked at um, came from plastic use in the processing, storage, and transport stage. However, you can see a difference on the food security and economics that we've just looked at. Um, the greatest plastic exposure at that level was um, under agricultural production. A brief note on study designs. Um, the most common was it an experimental design. And in the overall, overall results, this accounted for 87% um, of the study designs that we found. And under agricultural production, when we zoom in, that actually accounted for 93% um, of the study designs. Very briefly on um, the frequency of literature by study location and also um, publications per year. As you can see, the number of publications per year has increased dramatically over the last 20 years, um, considering the effects of plastics. And in terms of countries, um, China, the US, and India uh, were the locations that were most frequently found in our subsample. So to conclude, um, the vast weight of, or volume of the literature that we found uh, used agricultural production use of plastics as the exposure and focused on agricultural efficiency um, and productivity outcomes primarily. But this might be a bit of a surprise considering I think in the media and what most frequently springs to mind um, is things about packaging, plastic packaging used at the sort of processing level. And at the outcome level, we consider more effects on human health with the chemicals that I mentioned earlier. And also, of course, with David Attenborough and things, effects on, on wildlife as well. 
Some limitations, obviously these are just our preliminary results, um, but considering that they were randomly selected, um, we do hope that the trends that we've presented today will remain fairly consistent with our final results. And just a reminder that we can't make any causal statements following this review. However, we do hope that um, our review will pave the way for future systematic reviews and meta-analyses um, that will provide a greater understanding of how we can mitigate some of the harms of plastic whilst maintaining the benefits. So with many thanks um, to all of the authors on this paper from the Amana team and also from LSHTM and the Campbell Collaboration. Thank you and look forward to any questions.